You good to go? I'm good to go. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Talk to Danielle show. And this is our first episode, and I'm really excited because uh, we have an amazing guest on today. We're going to be talking to the top industry leader, best-selling author, gold medalist, pickleball champion, and of course, SAS boss, Sarah Weiss. There's quite a, a long, and that's not even the bio, that's just some of the titles. So thank you so much, Sarah, for joining me. Such an honor. It's it's funny because it depends on the year you talk to me. Each title is one different year over the past like five or six years. And there's that's my dog. Right. <laughs> that's okay we have uh this is this is what i like about this show we're just keeping it real right now we have the dog i may have my son pop in the, in, in a minute so uh we're just we're just here to have fun and uh sarah like sarah said it depends on the year on the month and uh that's why i'm just so excited to have you on because uh, we're gonna have a lot that we could share with our audience but before i start i'll just give a bit of a, a bio a little introduction to some of the things that you do um so sarah is a two-time number one best-selling leadership education author a high performance success coach an international motivational speaker and a top leader in the network marketing industry. Uh, so as I mentioned, she is a two-time best-selling author, a wealth coach, a serial entrepreneur, an agent of change, and a mother of two. She has built teams of thousands in network marketing and has helped multiple people earn six-figure incomes all across the world through MLM and through her prosperity acceleration coaching. So after 15 years of active in personal development, she realized that personal development only helps 4% of people actually impact their lives and found the answer to why she is dedicated to giving entrepreneurs a way to program their subconscious instincts for massive success. And this is what I love. Uh, there's so much more and I'll let you talk about the rest of your story, but, but I've seen you in action in the answer to why. And I was just, I was blown away. And that's why I was so, so drawn to you. And uh, so what I'll do is, if you can, for our listeners, um, kind of tell us about yourself, give us a, a bit of a, share your story with us. Oh, geez, where do I start? <laughs> I don't, you know what, it's funny. I don't like talking about myself. I like telling stories about myself sometimes, as long as it includes all kinds of fun and happiness. Actually, well, no, sometimes I talk about the darkness too. Actually, that's, that's really important. But about me, I am someone who loves life. I really do. I've, I've been to the lowest of lows and I feel like I've been to the highest of highs, but I keep striving for higher highs. And that also includes me ending up at lower lows sometimes. Um, but I've, I've started as an entrepreneur since I was a kid and I want to give you a little example. Apparently it's in my blood. My kids just did their first lemonade stand and the cutest thing I walked out there, they're making good money. And I see along the sidewalk leading up to our driveway, they drew chalk arrows from down the street saying fresh lemonade along the sidewalk all the way big arrows 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 all the way to the driveway <laughs> i couldn't believe it so entrepreneurship is apparently in our bloodline <laughs> so since i was a kid i knew i wanted to be an entrepreneur i wanted to own a house like there were certain kids that were like i want to be a scientist i want to be an astronaut me i wanted to own a business i didn't even know what i wanted to own but i knew i wanted to be an entrepreneur and i you know i grew up in a low income family and i knew that i wanted to break that chain very young I wanted to, you know, buy my mom a house one day. I wanted to take care of my family. You know, my mom, when I was at around 11 years old, ended up with a, an abusive guy and stayed with him for 11 years because she was too afraid to leave him for the financial reasons and for whatever other reasons. And I vowed to myself, I would never let that happen to me or my family. So I've always, always given my effort 110% whenever I get into a venture and MLM was a big one, network marketing. I got into a lot of network marketing opportunities that I failed miserably at until I think nine years in the industry, I finally started making money and then became a top leader and everyone couldn't understand why I would stay in that industry, but I am so freaking determined. And that just leads to everything I've done, including sports now. So 
entrepreneurship, teaching people how to do it, you know, how to go from being broke and in a low vibration and an ungrateful state of victim mentality, which I am very familiar with. Um, I'll, I'll quickly just go back five years, actually, I guess six years now, time's flying. Um, I was on welfare. I was a very broken version of myself living in a townhome just above ghetto with bed bugs. And I was a single mom of two, couldn't get a job. And I was just I hated life. I hated myself. You know, I was talking about how I love life. Well, back then I was toxically negative about everything to do with my life. I cursed God. I blamed everything on my bad luck. And I must, I must have had a terrible past life for all this bad luck. And I was such a victim. And I finally got my first mentor. I seeked out mentorship. I I said, enough is enough. I got to pull up here. And my mentor helped me find my gratitude again. I remember the moment it all shifted when I was in my room. I was like, okay, I got to be grateful again. I hate this bedroom. I hated it because it was my living room slash bedroom and it was filled with stuff. And I just, I wasn't happy with it. So I'm like, okay, you know what? If I can find gratitude in this room that I hate, then I'm, I'm, I'll be making progress. And I, first thing I saw was a doorknob. I'm like, okay, let's practice. I'm grateful for the doorknob. Why? Well, because my daughters open it every single day to give me love. And it changed everything. I was like, whoa, okay, I like that doorknob now. And then I started picking things all across my room. And all of a sudden, I was really, really grateful and happy. And it reframed my whole view of my life. All of a sudden, things started changing. I learned how to harness my ego. Um, You know, we were talking in my bio about... how I figured out why so many people who are in personal development don't get what they want. It's based on the programming we've had since we were born, teaching ourselves to to doubt, to ask ourselves what's wrong with X, Y, Z, what's wrong with myself. You know, if anyone watching this has ever asked themselves, what's wrong with me? I've asked myself that question probably over a half a million times, probably more than that. Yeah. And it's not easy when you live in a life where you were constantly asking yourself that question. And that's what kept me stuck. That question of what's wrong with me? Because guess what? I always had an answer. (laughs) Even if it didn't make sense, I had an answer of why something was wrong with me, what I did wrong, what's, what's so terrible about me, what's my disadvantages, why do I have such bad luck? I always had an answer. So I shifted the questions that I was asking. And in fact, I learned from a TV show, (laughs) it's funny, it was a cartoon TV show, that the power of the ego, how we can convince ourselves to believe our own lies. You know, and most people listening to this probably know someone who believes their own lies. Well, we all do it. You know, when we ask ourselves, what's wrong with me? We'll come up with an idea and then we'll believe it. Well, this led me to seeing how the world is like an illusion. And I say this because each and every one of us have our own perception or perspective of what life is. Therefore, none of us have the same perspective. So who's right? Who's wrong? Whose reality is real? And whose isn't? So for me, I just consider that an illusion. So if I have my own illusion based off my beliefs, my past experiences, my perspective, then why not create an illusion where I love myself? where the world actually has tons of opportunity and opening for me to be happy and live my best life. Well, how would you do that? Well, just like in that moment where I asked myself why I was grateful for a doorknob and found an answer that I believed in, I did the same thing for my whole life. I started to change everything I thought about myself. I asked, why is this awesome? What's so incredible about this? Why was I, like one of my favorite uh, questions I asked myself was, What gifts was I born with that'll allow me to live my greatest life? When I came up with the answers to that, all of a sudden I saw my whole world differently. So the part in my bio that you were talking about is how I like to teach people to harness their ego. I call it ego hacking. When you ask certain questions that lead you to an assumptive answer. Like if I have a problem, maybe you know, a good example, a physical example is when I'm at the gym, maybe I'm getting tired on the treadmill and I'm starting to to lose my energy, but I want to go longer because I want to maybe lose some weight and fit into a wedding dress. I want to go longer. I want to push harder and go faster. So I ask myself, why do I have such high strength and endurance? And I start to answer that question. All of a sudden, incredible answers coming in. Even if it doesn't really fully make sense, that's the power of our ego. It justifies our questions. 
So I ask this to myself and all of a sudden I'm like a scientist because every breath I take is bringing oxygen into my muscles and they're working twice as hard because I'm bringing in so much oxygen. All of a sudden I'm answering these questions like a scientist doctor and I'm feeling more powerful. I'm feeling like I could go faster and longer. So this is some of the stuff that has kind of led me into teaching and guiding. I love coaching people and sharing my experiences. Basically, I just tell people a bunch of stories that they can apply to their lives by asking them questions and see what, where they're at and saying, well, hey, this is what I've experienced. Here's how it relates. Now I'm an athlete. So don't ask how that kind of shifted, <laughs> shifted there. But yes, now I, I play sports full time. I am sponsored and I've never played sports since. Well, I have played since middle school volleyball and I'm 34 years old. So I don't know where this came from, but all of a sudden, hey, it's a new world. Now, now I'm playing pickleball full time. <laughs> That's right. And this is why I, you know, the show is called Becoming Limitless with Sarah Weiss. And that's really what it is. It's, I've experienced the whole process, the ego hacking, and uh, I've seen it in action. And I've actually used that story that you used when I was training to, to run. And I'd be like, okay, what did Sarah say? Yeah, that's right. My muscles, the oxygen, <laughs> when I just yes. wanted to stop and go back to the couch. So it just works. But you... And I, I, we're interviewing other athletes as well, where they talk about everything that the discipline that they've learned in their sports, in the you know right up to college or even if they went pro, how they transfer that over to life after sports. Mm. For you, it's quite the opposite. You're applying everything you learned in life into sports. So, um, well, you it's know, a mix it's, of both. You know, since cool. playing pickleball, there's a lot that stood out. Uh, that I wouldn't have noticed if I wasn't playing the sport. And I'm, I want to give you an example. You might have this as a question later on. I'm not sure. But one big lesson that I've learned in sports that I've brought into my life was as I was getting better, you know, when you start playing, there, there's a club close by that a bunch of members get to, you know, they pay their fee and they get to play on these courts. And there's something called drop-in. You know, we all go there and everyone plays randomly with everyone, unless you book a court with us, a, a little group. Well, I didn't know anyone yet. So I was doing this drop in and I started getting pretty good pretty quickly and it felt really good, but I started to get a little frustrated when I play with weaker players. So whether they were on my team or uh, I'm against them, if I had one say on my team and they kept hitting the net, causing faults, and, you know, the opponents wouldn't give me the ball because they knew I would just smack it back at them. Um, I started getting frustrated. And I could feel my energy, you know, my whole reason for playing pickleball is to have fun, to meet people, connect. The reason I play pickleball isn't to get a W. It's not to get to win. It's to have fun. <laughs> I love it. So when I noticed myself getting frustrated, I started to question it, you know, you know, why should I be getting frustrated when my whole goal here is to have fun? And I realized, I started to ask myself, you know, where else in my life do I do this? Where in my life do I not have the patience and maybe feel like I should have someone better helping me or, or this person should do better or be smarter? My judgments of people, just like I was judging my, my partner on the court. And I noticed in my life, when I started to look, it's like, I do that in a couple areas of my life. So I started to practice on the court, just being a pure cheerleader, just cheering, no matter how they play. And it's funny because when I do that, my partner and I both play better, have more fun and win games we technically shouldn't. I could play against two really good players and have this really weak player, but whatever happens, I cheer him or her on like, yeah, that was amazing. Good try. Wicked work. Keep it up. And all of a sudden we start getting points that we shouldn't be. And I started doing this in my life as well. I started to become even more of a cheerleader than I was before. And, uh, you know, recognizing people for whatever they do. It doesn't matter if it's an amazing accomplishment or if it's just an effort, recognizing it in them and cheering them on for it. And all of a sudden I started winning in life where I shouldn't be winning. So that was a huge lesson I, I've taken from pickleball into my life. And that that's, I, I'm super, super grateful that I got to realize that because I don't know that I would have or not as soon if I didn't have pickleball teaching it to me. That's right. And that's, that's a, a wonderful message to, to send out there because we tend to not look at the bigger picture. We're focused on, on this particular thing and winning is always uh, something that's drilled into us. So it's, it's great that you are able to, you're kind of showing us that you could apply both, you know, from life to sports, sports to life. And it's, yeah. it's important to teach that to our kids too, when they're in the sports and, and say, 
you know, what are you, are you having fun? <laughs> this is the whole point of the sport is to have fun. So that's a, a great, 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 um, great message to send out. Now, I, I, that's, I think it's a personal, it's a selfish question, but I've seen your progress in, uh, in pickleball and you got us all excited about pickleball. It's just like, pickleball. so um, <laughs> tell us what's new. Cause that you've had, you've made some amazing announcements in the last couple of weeks. And I just wanted to, to share that, how far you can go. It's, it's limitless. So don't think that once you're a pro athlete, you've won your trophies and your medals, you've been sponsored. There's more to it. So please share that with us. I have so much I could say about it. It, it. It's the coolest experience. I mean, if I could speak to myself, so I've been playing pickleball now for 14 months. If I could go 15 months back in time and speak to myself, what I would tell her would blow her mind. Like I would laugh so hard if future me, this me, when spoke to past me from 14 months ago, I would have laughed so hard. Sponsored athlete, really? And all the other things that I'll share, mind blowing, you know, changed my life dramatically. And, you know, not only would I have never guessed that I'd be a sponsored athlete or athlete in general, but all the other things that are happening, all the different sponsors that are coming in and picking me up, all the, the high end players who are respecting what I can do. Um, two or three months into playing pickleball. Now I'm big on social media. I love people. I love connection. Who is here at 820 while I want to go? <laughs> it's dark outside. Oh my gosh. Of course, of course. Anyways, so guys, keep it quiet though, please. Thank you. So That's two or three months into reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Welcome yeah. to real life, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so two or three months into playing pickleball, I started to share on social media how exciting it was. Anyone who's in my mastermind groups, including yourself, got to hear about pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. So I'm posting in like pickleball forums, you know, how much I love this sport. And, and the first paddle that I bought, I started to give them shout outs. I'm like, this paddle's amazing, by the way. It just won me my first gold medal, my first ever tournament. And I started saying things like, I kind of want to be a pro. And the company, they messaged me and they said, we love your posts. We want to send you some swag. I'm like, what? I get some free swag? You know, they sent me like this t-shirt. By the way, this is Prolight. That's the company that we're talking about right now. And they sent me some stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I was so grateful. Like my gratitude since the day of the doorknob has gone through the roof. I'm just so <laughs> grateful for everything, like ridiculously. And I sent them a message saying, this is so amazing. And then I made another post and I gave them another shout out and, and spoke highly of them and the sport. Honey, no, it's bedtime. <laughs> she play, it's dark. What is happening? <laughs> so um, I made this other post. And then about a week later, I reached out to them and I said, you know what? I want to back up paddle. So the paddle is what you use. It's like a, it's like a big overgrown um, ping pong or table tennis paddle. Um, and I messaged them. I was like, I need a backup paddle. What do you recommend? And the guy who sent me the swag, he said, actually, we'd like to speak to you. Can you call us? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I called them and they offered me sponsorship. They said, we know you're not a pro. We know how new you are in the sport, but we see the energy you bring to the sport. We see your posts and your social media, and we would love to send you a bunch of equipment, some apparel and sponsor you in your journey and support you in this growth. Amazing. <sighs> My mind blew. I could not believe it. Could not believe it. You know, and I could barely play the game. I just knew I loved it. Well, fast forward. Um, I just recently got three new sponsors, three. So I've got a company, Bam Metrics, sent me a bunch of workout equipment. And he's an amazing guy. Tyrol pickleball shoes, look them up. They are like top, top quality pickleball shoes. I got to try some on at a national competition and I love them. And I'll tell you, I go through shoes once a month. My, these shoes cannot keep up to me. I'm like crazy. I'm like a new person on the, the court. I'm like all lanky. My footwork sucks. I'm like crazy on the court, which apparently is exciting to watch because people love watching me, but I'm crazy on the court and my shoes do not last. They're like, you know, light and they're supposed to be like high technology. This new stuff I'm wearing is like heavy. 
the soles are made of like rubber from tires. It's crazy. And they're comfy. They don't chew my feet up. Every, every pair of shoes I put on, my ankles get chewed up. These tie roll shoes are amazing. I guess I'm doing a quick little tie roll plug, but I really am excited about these shoes. So now I'm wearing them. Uh, they're, they've sponsored me. ProLight has sponsored me. A band metrics has sponsored me. And I've recently picked up another sponsor, which I haven't really announced yet, but it's a nutrition line. So this nutrition line is sponsoring me, sending me and my husband a bunch of nutrition, supplements, uh, protein shakes, meal replacements, energy boosters, stress management uh, supplements, all kinds of things. So now I'm like super supported and sponsored with almost everything I need. I feel like uh, a, 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 an athlete, <laughs> like an actual athlete. And recently over the past couple of weeks, I've been getting to know the owner of ProLight, Neil Friedenberg is an amazing guy, you know, for him to, to see me as someone who he'd want to support and bring up like that alone, I loved, but getting to know him was incredible. His whole thing is that pickleball saves lives. So I've loved him since day one and him and I have created a really great relationship to the point where he offered me and my husband, because both of us love to speak to him and we, we give him advice from our marketing backgrounds and stuff. He offered us both to lead all of his athletes, his uh, distributors, and his brand ambassadors. We've created a gamification system that we can use within the team to create engagement and activity and community and culture. And everything we get to do is about having more fun with pickleball. And we're getting paid to do it. It's really neat. I also decided to start selling their paddles. So now I'm selling their paddles. Every time I go out to play pickleball, I sell a paddle, paddle or two. I'm also, guess what? I'm coaching in pickleball. <laughs> go <laughs> figure. Yeah. So I'm now making money playing pickleball before I'm even a pro. And here's why this is so amazing. And it, it blows my husband's mind every time we talk about it. When I started to play pickleball, I was in the middle of transitioning in businesses, maybe not transitioning, but I have multiple businesses. I'm in the crypto space. I'm in network marketing. I have my own coaching business, uh, mother of two, and I've got a lot going on, you know, writing and anyways, everything, speaking, coaching. And I told Adam, my husband, I want to create a life where I get to do this whenever I want. And it's a game, you know, it's just right now. And it's not even a big sport yet. It's getting bigger and getting bigger. And it's almost getting to the point where people can make incredible livings off of it. The top pros are now making decent money that they're living well. But my thoughts are like, I want to be a pro. But even in the meantime, I don't want to have to be a pro to be able to play full time. I want to be able to play full time and, and coach my clients and somehow make money that I can have an incredible abundant life. And, you know, with, with me saying that to Adam, it was like, okay, I don't know how, <laughs> I have no idea how it's going to happen. I just know that that's what I want to create. And all of a sudden these little opportunities kept popping up, new sponsors, new ways to make money in selling paddles, coaching people, um, doing TikTok videos and educating people that way, meeting new people on the court and then turn and then bringing them into as coaching clients. And now I'm working with the first company who ever sponsored me pretty much a year ago, probably to the day yeah. <laughs> I am now working with them and leading all these athletes in a way that creates incredible culture and community, something that no other company out there is doing. So it's really exciting. And I get to wake up, set my schedule and go play pickleball. You know how many, how many hours I played pickleball today? You know, I told you told six me. hours straight, <laughs> six hours straight. <laughs> It's crazy. Seven in the morning, I was on the courts playing with one group. And then from that group, I moved on to the 10 o'clock group, played with another group. And then after that, everyone's like, why are you still here? I was like, well, you know, the challenge court's open. So I'm going to go play a couple challenge court games. <laughs> I'm obsessed. But this is it. When you love what you do, it, it doesn't even feel like work or a workout or you're just having fun and it just changes the, the game. It really does. If you're in your mind that I'm just going to do these sets and I'm hurting and my, I twisted my ankle and this and that, you stop and, and that's it. But you take it. And that's why I always say that you're limitless because you just take it that much. And, and this has all happened within 14 months. Yeah. Yeah. It, anything's possible. Like I keep telling people I'm going to go pro and I'm not, uh, I'm like, I'm one of the top women in, in Ottawa, in the city. 
but that's not really much. Like when you go across the States and you go into Florida, that's where really great competition is. That's like the capital of pickleball. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really not that great. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm playing at pretty much the highest level tournaments here in Ottawa, but in the States, there's other levels above. Um, but just to, to think in one year, how much has changed and how much better I've gotten. And I tell you, I would not have believed myself going back into the future, telling me you you're going to be a sponsored athlete. You're going to be playing at a very high level with potential to be a pro and leading other athletes from the sponsor who originally sponsored you only three months into your career. Uh, That's like, uh, who are you? Go. <laughs> are, you, are you a dream? <laughs> I don't play sports. <laughs> And that's the other thing too, is you, you yeah, the, you, you didn't play sports. This just came out of the board. Or wind. watch sports. Like sports weren't a thing for me. I got into like, I'm in Canada. I barely watch hockey. I'll go to a game because it's fun, you know, to be with friends in the environment. Um, I've seen a couple football games on TV, uh, some UFC fights, I guess. Other than that, don't like baseball. Really, you know, there's other sports. I but pickleball. I don't know. It just did it for me. <laughs> you found it. And that's amazing. <laughs> this is awesome. It's a trip. I, you should see, yeah. I have a little metal collection, medals, gold medals and silver medals. I got my first bronze the other day. <laughs> nice. Nice. I've seen the medals around your neck and I'm thinking she's just going to tip over eventually. <laughs> it's getting heavy. It's getting, <laughs> it's getting heavy. That's why you need those heavy shoes. It just kind of yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not messing around anymore. I'm taking this pretty serious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know you've touched on it a lot uh, earlier, but you know, you you kind of mentioned it quite a bit. But what would you say uh, some bad habits that you would have had to let go of to just go to that next level? So just take in sport in or in life. Whichever one you want, either one. Oh, <laughs> bad habits. Well, judging people is a bad habit. But, you know, I don't like to look at things as good or bad. There's just adjustments that could be made. You know, there's good, good, there's positives to judging. Nothing is absolute one way or the other. Um, but I've, I've learned a lot about my judgments and my quick reactions to how people behave on the court and brought that into my life. Um, you know, I understand that we all see a different perspective, but sometimes it feels like personal. You know, when someone does something from their perspective, we can be triggered. I'm sure everyone knows that word triggered in a way that we think it's their fault. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it's our thing. You know, even if someone cheats on you, we say, well, it's their fault. I feel this way. No, no, no. You can feel however you want to feel. Yeah. Someone can cheat on you and you can go, Oh, well, they're clearly not right for me. So, you know, go find someone who's right for you and I'll do the same for me. And I know it sounds easy, but it's, yeah. it's not, but that is how simple it, it, technically can be if we allow it but no we judge we say well they did this to me they hurt me and they're bad people and now I'm hurt because of them and, and all that stuff I learned a lot about that in that little example I spoke to you about on the court you know my reactions and behavior or my energy based on what I think someone should be you know how should they be in my perspective uh, yeah. that's that's not how it should be i shouldn't have to put expectations on someone and give them the responsibility of my happiness here here's my happiness don't mess it up oh you messed it up now i'm not happy like that's, no yeah. that's that's no mm -mm -mm. that was a big lesson for me for sure and that came from pickleball i mean the solidification of it really it became apparent and obvious to me that i was doing that so big life lesson right there when you see it from a different angle because i mean you you're in your professional life that's what you do that's what you coach but taking it outside of uh, into a, a different context you can kind of see some other little areas that you're thinking okay i need to change that mindset a little bit or you know, this, uh, and it is the heart and you're right because that's that's the one i'm still working on too is um not to have expectations because it's not fair for the other person. Like you said, like, make me happy. It's your job, you know? It's just not, yeah. It's not, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and, and life can be really magical if you let it be, but we, we really get caught on how we think life should be. 
We think life should, or we should be farther by now. We should be better. We should be whatever. I mean, fill in the blank X, Y, Z. The whole expectation we put on our life and ourselves limits us. It limits us to see what's right in front of us. And there's magic all around us. When you stop thinking so intently on how you think your life should be or how you think you should be, and you just accept life as it is, accept yourself as you are, you're not distracted. Now you can see. Now your eyes open. And all of a sudden, it's, it's brighter. It's more beautiful. You know, I have a list of reasons I could be stressed the heck out right now. <laughs> I could be so stressed. I could be depressed in a fetal position. <laughs> all the reasons. I've got all the reasons, but I decided to just be in the moment because those reasons, they all end up in my thoughts. And all of a sudden it's just, it's, I'm gone. I'm not even in a moment. I'm in my thoughts. Where are the, where am I? I don't even know. When you get stuck in your thoughts thinking about, oh my God, uh, rent's due and I don't know if I can make the money. What am I going to do? How do I do it? Uh, oh, this part, person still owes me money or whatever. You're not here. You're in thought land. You're gone. How can you recognize the beauty of what's right in front of you if you're gone in thought land? And because I've brought myself down and started to look around a lot more, I do these little 360s, just like I did in my bedroom that one day, I start to look around and go, wow, look what I've got here. When I drive, I love when I go on drives and I see all the trees and the birds and the sky and the sun and the people. And I, you know, someone will cut me off and I'll be like, I don't even care. Look at this beautiful world. Like I almost died right now and I'm still alive. This is amazing. That's right. You know? It changes everything. Yeah. So, and I've, I've, I've experienced that in sport. It's just being present in the game, being present in the moment has really changed my life as well. That's awesome. That kind of leads me to the next question because uh, a lot of people will say, oh, if I would have known this when I was younger, you know, I would have, my life would have been different or, or anything like that. So uh, what would you, with everything that you've learned or with your incredible journey, uh, what are the things where you say, I'm going to make sure my daughter's know this so that life yeah. can be just a little easier for them uh what what would those things be don't avoid being who you truly are because you're worried about what others will think of you i did that for way too long way way too long and it caused depression it caused that that toxic negativity i spoke about that was that was why because i was so afraid of myself of who I was and how much I'd be judged and, and non-accepted and all that stuff. It's funny because I thought of myself as so severely disadvantaged and I had limitations. The limitations and disadvantages were all up here. So what I would tell myself is to find the reason why what you think is a disadvantage is actually your strength and your superpower. That was a big shift for me when I started to see myself, you know, with all the disadvantages and limitations that I thought I had based on my past of being born in a different, being seen as a different gender, and then telling the world, hey, by the way, I'm not what you think I am, I'm something different. I thought that was a big disadvantage. And I started to ask myself, how could I see that as a superpower? Because I'm sick of being ashamed of who I am. How can I see what I think is so terrible about me? as something so incredible about me. And I started to come up with answers. That's what our ego does. This is the ego hack. And this is where I really got to see it showcased before I even knew what I was doing. I asked myself, how can I make this a superpower? And all of a sudden I started sharing my story. I started to document my journey on YouTube and I gained a massive following of people who were like, you're so real and we, we appreciate it. I just want to know more about you because you, you don't sugarcoat. You don't hide who you are. You're not ashamed of all the mistakes you've made in the darkness and the people you've hurt. Like I've admitted to all of my stuff. And the more I do it, the more I'm real with how human I am, how imperfectly perfect I am, the more people go, you're amazing. And I get the opportunity to meet these amazing people who feel the same way that we shouldn't have to hide who we are, that we're amazing, that we are actually awesome. If there was one message I could say to the world that I wish they believed is that you are so much more awesome than you're giving yourself credit for. I so wish people could believe those words coming out of my mouth. Sometimes it takes me 
a year to convince people that they're awesome. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Because every single person with all our weird little unique quirks that make us these imperfect selves are actually what make us so freaking awesome and unique and special and desirable and, and respected and wanted. Yeah. And we think it's the opposite. We think it's the opposite. I thought for sure that when the world knows who I truly am, I'll have nobody. Mm-hmm. And it was the other way around. I got incredible people. The, the, the people who shouldn't have been there, the, the people who the insecure, the ones who are judgy and, and stuff like that, they took themselves out and I w- it was replaced with people who love people for who they are. Yeah. And those are the people you want to be around. You, you All the time. Those people around you, no matter what your situation is, whatever your superpower is, uh, you want to be around the people that will come to you. You don't need to have to go into chasing people. Those are not- yeah, and that's when stuff gets weird and it's awesome. <laughs> When you're around other weirdos, the the weird people around you, you get, you hear things and you're like, interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I don't get it, but Hey, if you do roll with it. (laughs) I hadn't quite seen it that way. Thank you for teaching me that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, No, it's awesome. And that's, that's when you know you're in the right place and you're exactly where you need to be. That's awesome. I want to ask you another question and this, I'll give a little bit of a background on this one. Um, a little girl was interviewing me. She was a bit about eight or nine a couple of years back. She, it was for a school project. She was interviewing a bunch of adults and she always heard adults ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? So she would ask these adults the same question and the, the adults wouldn't answer. And her mother, she kept telling her mom, why is it that the adults, why don't they get it? <laughs> they just don't get it. They said, well, I'm old. I'm already grown. You know, I'm already doing what I want to do. And the, even her parents are saying, well, maybe you should stop asking. Because she was getting frustrated. She's like, why don't these adults get it? <laughs> so the parents didn't tell me about this. At the end of the interview, she asked me and I answered because I'm a, just a big kid at heart. So she got all excited and she just turned around. And she goes, you see, mom, somebody gets it. <laughs> So I told her, I promised her that I would ask every time I interview somebody, I would ask. So the question is, Sarah, what would you like to be when you grow up? I want to be a professional pickleball player. (laughs) And there's so many things included with that. I want to teach people. I want to bring people into it. I want to play at the Olympics. I want to meet all the, the top athletes. I want to make friends with all the top characters of the world who teach people how to live their greatest life. Whatever that looks like, I don't know, but I just, I know I want it. I know I want to be around these incredible people who teach others how to just be the best versions of themselves by accepting the best versions of themselves. And playing pickleball right now is just so, so fun to me. So I want to take it as far as I can take it. And whatever happens along the way, bring it on. That's awesome. Be, care- be careful it. what you wish for. That's what I, I just heard the universe tell me. Just be careful what be you wish. Be careful. <laughs> the universe can have quite the sense of humor too. Oh, <laughs> so- man. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. Before we go, I just, how can we reach you? There's so, I, and I mean, you mentioned the shoes. You're out there all the time. You've shown what your shoes look like after a little while. So I'm excited with this, <laughs> this Tyrol sponsor. But uh, where can people reach you if they wanted to either do some uh, work with you or coaching or just get into pickleball? Uh, yeah. How can they contact you? Yeah. So Facebook is like my main platform. If you want to find me on Facebook, Sarah Weiss, W E I S S. Um, I have a page, I have groups, but just find my profile. I'm on TikTok under, I think it's I Pickleball. I'm on YouTube as Empowered Pickleball. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Empowered Pickleball. I- I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere. If you're online, you'll find me. <laughs> it's, it's funny because yeah. now people that I play pickleball with, they're like, I saw your videos. I'm like, I didn't know you even knew I had YouTube. But yeah, I, I make tutorials. I teach people how to do these things. So people are finding my videos. If you want to find me, you will. Just Google Sarah Weiss, which is kind of cool now. <laughs> it's like, there's this, 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 this. I have my book. I wrote a book that I- I'm not like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty humble. I think for the most part, 
But this book, it really captured a lot of the lessons that I've learned growing up through my life that took me out of that dark place that I'm talking about and into a very bright existence, a vibrant, abundant existence. Um, if you don't know, I make good money doing what I do. And it's not just from pickleball, it's from all kinds of different things, but I had to learn a lot of lessons to get to this place. So I wrote it in my book and in my book, I'm very candid on all the things I've done, the mistakes I've made, the darkness I've faced, the challenges I've overcome, the realizations, aha moments and breakthroughs that I've had to have to get to where I'm at in this incredible place. It's called Not Born This Way by Sarah Weiss. <laughs> so you, can find, you can find it on Amazon. Um, I also have a Facebook group about it. Anyways, find me on Facebook. If you, if you like what I'm saying, if, if you're vibing, connect with me. I love connecting with people. I'm not someone who like makes this a uh, big scene about who I am and then like avoid people. No, I want to talk to you. <laughs> if you love what I'm talking about, reach out. I'd be happy to say hello. Yeah. And that's the truth. That's that uh, you always are available and, and, uh, checking up on people say hey how you doing and it's great and that book by the way is amazing I, I've, I've read it and it's so impactful it is incredible so definitely like you said you just you just put it out there is what so people you mentioned people sugarcoat everything to make themselves look you know better um, yeah I, I threw the sugar so out and I... <laughs> real and raw <laughs> just some of it is... some of it's sour patch kid tasting <laughs> 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 but it's amazing the message out there is absolutely amazing so uh yeah it's thank you, you can look for sarah she's uh, she's there and she's i have the book right here let me grab it i'll show okay. you what it looks like yeah i was actually i wanted to bring it to show but uh <laughs> there it is i love you too honey there it is <laughs> there it is yeah it is an amazing book and it, it's not a thick book either so you know a lot of people get discouraged when they see a thick book this is awesome it's a it's a good read and, uh, every so. but almost everybody who's picked this up it looks like a thick book but like you know it's, it's not huge writing most people finish it in two days they cannot put it down hi baby That's you right. want to say hello to everybody say hello hi. hi this is my daughter what's your name adriana yeah i forgot what it was so i had to ask her <laughs> good thing she remembers <laughs> well you thank like you again. Ball? yeah my future pickleball star. I have a pro light paddle. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Yes. I'm sure yeah. everybody in the family has pro light pilots. Hi! Hi. <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> yes, she does. No, she doesn't. She can use any of our pro. I have zillions of pro light paddles. Yeah, that's right. And here's my husband, Adam. There is the whole family. Hey, Adam. <laughs> so there you are. The whole family, raw and real, is the way we like it. I'm surprised I didn't see my son come up those stairs. Actually, he's I, he was supposed to be home, so I will let you go because now they they have the limelight, so they. Uh, <laughs> We'll take they take over, over real fast. <laughs> take over. Thank you again for everything. Oh, is that the espresso? Yeah. <gasps> All right. So I have to, I do have to say one last thing before we go. I am a, a coffee lover to the extreme and they were saying they got a new espresso machine so i'm all excited for you <laughs> all right well thank you thank you so much and uh for anybody else have a great day or evening depending on where you are and uh, stay safe stay awesome we'll talk soon <laughs>